Let me see your hands. Speeds at 120. Pass it, pass it, pass it, pass it. Please, get these. Welcome to Beyond the Blacktop. I'm your host, Juan Lupe Caceres. This episode, we're dedicating to Police Memorial Week, a time where we can honor the service and sacrifice of those law enforcement officers who have fallen in the line of duty. This week, we're able to reflect on the bravery and commitment of those who have given their lives to protect and serve our communities. We're able to interview a second generation trooper, Trooper Zachary Sanchez. Zachary Sanchez, thank you for being with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Trooper Sanchez, how long have you been with DPS? I've been with DPS for a little over two years. This August will be three years of service at DPS. And graduating out of the academy, where were you uh, stationed? I was stationed in Andrews, Texas, straight out of the academy. That's just a little bit north of Midland and Odessa. That has been my duty station ever since I've came out and have not moved since. And so that, that area is considered the El Paso district? Yes, it fall on the Region 4. Region 4? Yes. Sir. Okay. I mentioned in the introduction that you were a second generation trooper. Can you tell us a little bit about your father? Uh, my father was a man that just about everything he did, he lived and breathed service. Service is probably something he did on duty, off duty, and it's something that he embodied every day, um, whether it was to his family, whether it was to his community, or whether it was at his at his work, at being a trooper. A Texas state trooper is in the fight for his life. He was shot while tracking down the driver involved in a wreck when that driver shot him. Moises Sanchez died today, nearly five months after being shot in the line of duty near the U.S.-Mexico border. What does it feel like to wear the same uniform that your father wore once? It's, it's a huge honor for me. Um, there's a lot of weight that comes with that same uniform. Um, when I put it on, there's a ton of emotions that go through your body. I mean, um, while every day just is work sometimes, I mean, at the end, whether I'm putting it on or taking it off or even in the middle of my shift, I mean, it, it never fails somewhere within my shift. And it crosses my head that this was the same uniform that my father had wore. And there's a lot of honor that, that comes with that. So I mean, for me personally, it, it's just the main word that comes to my head is, is just honor. No, you, your father was was a great example of going above and beyond the trooper uniform or going above and beyond the law enforcement aspect. He might just see himself as a volunteer coach, but, you know, kids will look back years later and say, you know, you know what, Trooper Sanchez, Coach Sanchez, like you made a difference in my life. At what point in your life did you say, I want to follow my father's footsteps? It was always something that I, was, that I wanted to do. Um, prior to um, my father's passing and the incident occurring and, and all of that, um, I was going through like a, a pulley program for the military um, to where that's what I was wanting to do. And this entire time, my father was helping me prepare for it and everything. Um, and I decided that at some point I wanted to join DPS after um, serving the military and such. However, um, that's when things took for a worse, uh, took a turn for the worst. And um, after seeing the outpouring of support from DPS and just seeing how much of a family and how much other people are willing to serve um, my family and how much they're willing to give to us. And I mean, it's just at that point, my heart was just DPS and DPS. And so rather than waiting until later and going through everything else, I wanted to just right then and there, I wanted to apply for DPS. Aside from the, the support that DPS has provided for, for you and your family, did you expect the outpouring from the community? Um, when some, when things like this happen, I mean, it's your mind is just focused on you, your family, and um, and you appreciate the people near you, but it was definitely a huge blessing to um, witness the community band together like they did. Um, seeing them band together like they did was something that I did not expect them to be completely honest with you, but it was it was an honor to see the way that 
um, anyone from businesses to just regular people to um, families, they, they'd, they'd go ahead and send in messages, whether it was on Messenger, maybe it was even a comment on, on some article, but everyone was always wishing the best for my father's recovery upon the initial incident. And then finally, when he did succumb to his injuries, I mean, just the same amount of support and it was, it was nationwide. Uh, yeah. there, there was, without a doubt, um, sure was. not just in my immediate community in the Valley, but even when my father had moved to Houston for further therapy and such before he succumbed to his injuries, um, people that we never even knew, um, just continuing, just wanting so much to give to us and um, their time, their, their prayers, everything. Um, it, was, it was overwhelming, but in, in the best way. So let's go back to you putting on that uniform. When you put on this, this DPS uniform, the first time, the first time you put on this DPS uniform, whether it was in the academy or before graduation or hours before graduation, what goes through your mind? I remember putting it on, I believe they selected a few people out of our class to do a few videos and um, it was a little bit nerve wracking because I'd never worn it. And then out of all of our classmates, I was the first, one of the first to wear it um, for the purposes of that video. But even in that moment, even though it was all for um, just a simple interview, it wound up being pretty emotional for me um, to see myself in that uniform. And I had not graduated yet at that point, but um, it was definitely, it felt unreal. Yeah, because you, you would see your father wear the same one. Yes. You know, yeah. So it's a surreal moment mm -hmm. that, man, you know, my father wore this uniform and now I'm able to wear it, mm -hmm. graduate, and become a Texas State Trooper just like him. Being away, the oldest brother being away from, from your mom or, or your family, being able to open up to your coworkers, your sergeants, your chain of command, has that helped you cope? with the tragedy i would say so yes um it's not something i think of in the moment but i looking back um it's it's a lot easier to, to tell a story without getting emotional and such and not that there's anything wrong with getting emotional and telling a story and i still do sometimes but as far as um um every time i tell it i always try to add something else in there that i may not have told the last person and mm -hmm. So, and for me, um, it also helps just me to reflect on him yeah. all, all the much more um, whenever he, he is brought up. And aside from just the uniform and the legacy and everything, my father himself is, I'm just very proud to have him and his story to tell to everybody. So, Zach, what is the best memory of your father in a patrol car? I think for me is when he first got his new unit, he, fir he first got his Tahoe. He was driving a Crown Vic for the longest time, and he loved it. I mean, he was just happy to have a black and white. He never once complained. I mean, a black and white is a black and white. That is why he joined was to to wear that uniform and to drive black and white. And he was um, um, so proud when he finally was able to bring a, the even just a Crown Vic home, and then even even more so when he had the when he finally got his new unit as well. Um, it's those those two days are probably the, the ones that that come to mind when he first got his Crown Vic and then when he first got his Tahoe. What is the worst part of this? Um, it's, the worst part is just that he's not able to be here to see all this. I mean, now I think, you know, I'm a very spiritual person and I do believe um, that I'll be able to speak with him um, in heaven and, and such. Um, but as far as right now, I mean, it, it, it still hurts. I mean, to be able to put on this new uniform and be proud, but not to have his immediate reaction and not to be able to immediately talk back and forth about um, trooper stories or even just seeing my siblings graduate, um, go through all of these other milestones in life and for him not to be able to be there um, because of the loss, just to have that section of our life just removed. It's every milestone, It's there's always that, that lingering feeling of, Emptiness. Now we try not to let it over encompass us, and we try to. We'll still bring it up, and we won't push it to the side at the same time. But it's it's there, but we still try to make the 
the most of it. Um, just happy that we're still here to to celebrate each milestone as in as they come. We're literally moments away from the grand opening of this memorial. You know, you walk around, you, you see your father's name mm-hmm. on this memorial. How does that make you feel? How does this make you feel? Um, it's it's just a lot of respect shown and a lot of honor in putting a memorial together and just to, for the sole purpose of uh, making sure that these people aren't forgotten. Um, because it's not just my father, but it's it's so many other people that um, unfortunately lost their lives as well. And seeing that, um, just knowing that the unfortunate truth is that any one of us could end up on a, on a memorial just like this in the future. And it's, it's the last thing we want to ever think about, but at least knowing that, um, that the department, the community as a whole um, are willing to at least show um, respect to to those sacrifices it, it, mean, it means a lot the great thing about about this memorial also is we do have our own memorial within the academy mm-hmm. we have pictures of fallen troopers but that's something that only dps personnel can see mm-hmm. you know this this memorial is for everyone to see Everyone is be going down the line, reading troopers' names, and that just gives those people the opportunity to study, mm-hmm. look at the history. It's not just a name on the wall. It's a family member. One of the most important things to recognize is that you do have a choice in what you do to decide to do afterward. And I think the main thing that while it's important to allow out your emotions and to be able to be sad for for a moment, I feel like the focus should be on what you can do moving forward, uh, whether it's honoring their legacy, whether it's appreciating the people you have around you that much more, or whether it's, a, it's taking whatever this person really embodied and really trying to apply that to yourself. There's There's so much that growth that can happen from it um, and it's it's just about making the, the best out of whatever situation you have it's, it's not easy to do and it's not something that is that anyone really ever wants to go through but um, I think for every wall that you face there's always that wall plus so much more growth to happen afterward and um, losing somebody is is a, is a pretty huge wall and but i feel like it it is kind of our obligation to go ahead and um, hold our family together as much as we can and to to push through and do the things that would make that person happy to see us doing so over 200 years texas department of public safety officers have risked their lives around the clock to protect texas Trooper Floyd E. Lawson, Texas Highway Patrol B. Ville, End of Watch, April 7, 1948. Trooper Richard Dale Behrens, Texas Highway Patrol Rockport, End of Watch, March 8, 1963. Trooper Harry Lee Mills Jr., Texas Highway Patrol Sinton, End of Watch, April 3, 1965. Trooper David Irvine Rucker, Texas Highway Patrol Port Isabel, End of Watch, September 29, 1981. Trooper Ernesto Alanis, Texas Highway Patrol McAllen, end of watch, February 27, 1983. Trooper Roel Garcia, Texas Highway Patrol Falfurias, end of watch, March 26, 1997. Trooper Eduardo Chavez, Texas Highway Patrol Pondview, end of watch, May 2, 2006. Trooper Moises Sanchez, Texas Highway Patrol Pondview, end of watch, August 24, 2019.